Um, the Deputy Provincial Chairperson has already alluded to the fact that uh, we living under very trying times uh, in that the program was supposed to have started at 6 o'clock. Uh, when I called Usis Lindy, she had just landed, I think it was just before 7 o'clock. And when I told her about uh, our predicament, and she said it was a blessing in disguise because she arrived late. Firstly, let me, the leaders of the election, he was the Deputy General Secretary of Sato when he tragically passed away in a car accident a few years ago. We then resolved as an organization to have this lecture annually. Now, we've had this lecture, I think, once before in the Southern Cape. I can't remember when it was. But we take it throughout the province because we are not leaders of Sato in the peninsula, Squali. I was one of those fortunate young teachers when I joined the teaching fraternity to have met and worked with Ukombrit Upasquali. And uh, we we'll then have later on our national treasurer as well amongst here, amongst us here, who will be able to deliver the lecture and she'll be introduced later uh, as we continue with the program, comrades. It's unfortunate that we started late. However, we had to deliver on this program. And you should bear with us, comrades. We've been here in the Southern Cape since Monday, Zorch. Uh, we started in Otsoran on Monday and arrived here yesterday and will be leaving on Saturday afternoon. And part of our visits around here has been pivotal to the existence of Satu. Basi Akumula Makabani were a trade union. And a trade union, Ibalu Amanani. Our numbers are pivotal to our existence as a trade union because we need to enter into bargaining with the employer and strive for the improvement of service, conditions of service of workers. And therefore, our responsibility, as we said earlier on this uh, today, as we moved around schools in George, was to make sure that the response shows the provincial organizer. But it's a responsibility. It's by giving them information. It's by consulting them. It's by calling meetings and having structural meetings of the organization comrades. Because Usatu, Funeke Kubeke, they are going to address us here on the life and times of Comrade Don, but also on very pertinent issues that pertain to us as members of SATU. Comrades, you are all welcome. Amanda. Thank you, Comrade Chairperson. Um, comrades, but before I go on to the next item, I would like to ask Comrade Willem, Comrade Willem, do we have the direct link, the link for, for other SATU members? So we've posted the link. All right. Thank you very much. So the next um, item is the lightning of uh, candles. And we ask the provincial gender convener, Comrade Cheryl, to come forward. A round of applause for her as well. And then I'm going to ask Comrade Kabis and the choir, while she's doing that, to lead us in song, please. Not now. Not now, Good evening, comrades. Amantla! Amantla! Viva Satu Viva! Comrades, we are gathered here tonight as a Satu family. Comrades, we just heard from Comrade Makasi that the power is coming back on, and that means we are going to have.
candles I will indicate. So the first candle will be lit by Comrade Ingrid, our education convener. Comrade Ingrid. As we light this candle tonight, we are reminded of his great achievements and his contribution. For that we salute you. We will remember him for his rare revolutionary ethics which distinguished him from so many other leaders of our movement. The second candle will be lit by our treasurer comrade Nita. When we light this candle, we are reminded that the act of lighting a memorial candle is a sacred one, a holy act of remembrance, and it is done so as to honor the ones we have lost by sharing their light as well as ever burning flame. We are thankful for the memory, the example of a selfless cadre and so we are reflecting on the many ways he has helped to shape our lives as leaders, workers and members of Satu, striving to bring out the best in us. May we then strive to realize Comrade Don's dream of uniting the workforce for the betterment of all our people. We will now call upon the Deputy Provincial Secretary to light the last candle. And so we say, rest in eternal peace, Comrade Don. Lalan Kolo, we salute you. Amandla, Amandla. Long live the spirit of Don Pasquale, long live. Long live the spirit of Don Pasquale, long live. Amandla. Thank you, Comrade. Thank you, comrades. Next up will be the choir again with the second song for us. So, choir, we're waiting on you.
Let's give them another round of applause. Beautiful Satu. And you know what? That's not the last of them. We are still going to hear from them later. Uh, comrades, we're moving on swiftly. So next up, we're going to have the introduction of some of our guests. And with that, I call to the podium our Provincial Educator, Education Convener, uh, Comrade Ingrid. She's going to be accompanied by the Provincial Secretary, Deputy Secretary, Comrade Williams. Give them a big round of applause. Viva Satu Viva! Viva, Viva Satu Viva! Viva. Comrades, um, I have the privilege to introduce my, my boss in Kusatu. Um, I want to greet and welcome Comrade Andili. Comrade Andili hails from Sakau. He's an office bearer there, but he's also the Deputy Provincial Chairperson of Kusatu in the Western Cape. Comrade Andili, may you please rise to greet the membership of South Coast Region, please. Thank you, my chairperson. With the chairperson, we have a worker leader from Sakao as well, and we want the comrades just to stand and just say good evening to the comrades of South Coast Region. Um, from Sakao, we have a worker leader. May you please rise and just greet the comrades, please. 
Watinta Bakoto. Viva! Viva! Mantla! 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 We are here. Comrades, now mine is just to uh, not introduce, but just to ask the national treasurer to say hello to us uh, because the second convener is going to do the whole introduction uh, with all the degrees and all the positions uh, that she has, is covering at the moment. So I just want to ask the National Treasurer, Comrade Lindy, just to stand up and just greet the, the comrades of the Western Cape. Thank you, comrades. Comrades, I'm calling on Comrade Andile. Let's bring him to the stage. Comrade Andile. Viva Sato Viva! Viva Sato Viva! Viva Sato Viva! Viva Cosato Viva! Viva SACP Viva! Viva ANC Viva! Viva ANC ANC Viva! Amanda! Amanda! Thank you. Thank you very much, comrades. Uh, program director. Thank you very much. Uh, comrade, I hear the treasurer saying that I'm her boss. I disagree with that because we're both elected in the same Congress. We signed same nominations with different, with different portfolio. <laughs> I have no comment on that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Comrade, without wasting time, let me allow me to greet the national leadership present here. 
led by the national treasurer uh, of Satu, Comrade Lindiwe, provincial leadership led by Comrade Vusi, the provincial chairperson of Satu, leadership of South Coast region, distinguished guests present, and as well all workers on behalf of provincial office bearers of Kosatu, please receive our warm revolutionary greetings. Allow me, Comrade, to come over Secretary of Western Cape and as well as the Deputy General Secretary of Satu. It is a great contribution to workers struggling, this comrade that has contributed. As much as we believe that comrade, his time was very short, or his lifetime was very short, as we expected, but his contributions speaks volumes that he has made. It is for that reason, as COSATU, we are here to pledge our support to SATU in memory of Comrade Don. Please, Comrade, allow us to pledge a support and solidarity to yourselves in memory of this gallant. As office bearers of Kosatu, we are saying to you, the work that you are doing to commemorate this comrade, this giant, it is immense. Long live the spirit of Comrade Don, long live. Long live. Long live the spirit, Comrade Don, long live. Long live. Amanda. Kawe too. Thank you very much, Comrade. Thank you to Comrade Andile. Uh, comrades, it's cold and wet outside, and we want everyone to get home safely and while the power is still on. So we move swiftly on to item number seven, where we have the introduction of our keynote speaker, and the second convener is going to introduce her to us. A round of applause for our second convener. Viva Satu Viva Viva Kosatu Viva Viva the African National Congress Viva Long live Satu Long live Long live Satu Long live Down with capitalism down Down with capitalism down For what to socialism for what Thank you comrades thank you very much uh, mine is just uh, too short and brief to the point. I'm asked you to introduce our keynote speaker today. But as I do that, maybe 
Many comrades who know me may know that I've been serving SATU for quite a long time. Executive and executive and executive has changed and I've been there. So sitting at the back, there at the back, is the gender convener of our time. It's purely a pity that I'm still here, but I served Comrade Veronica Williams at some stage. <laughs> Comrades, I must introduce somebody might all know. The person I'm introducing today is the National Office Bearer of SATU, a position he held since her first election in 2010. Comrade Lindy is a teacher by profession from Bumalanga. She joined SATU in 1995. Since then, she served the union with a distinction and dignity. First, Comrade Lindy became a side steward uh, in her school. I just can't pronounce that name, Comrade Lindy, the secondary school that we were teaching in Bumalanga in 1995. And then in the, at the school level, she was appointed as a, as a head, as a departmental head. I'm old community, it used to be an HOT to us, now these days a departmental head. So I want to be educationally correct. <laughs> yeah, it was a departmental head for curriculum coordination. What a comrade. She served in her branch committee as a chairperson as well. She went on to, to serve as the chairperson of the Zeni region in Bumalanga. Comrade Lindy is currently the national treasurer of us. And she's got a vision in the portfolio she's, living, she's leading. As a treasurer, Comrade Lindy she wants to ensure that there's adequate resourcing of the union through creating reserves. You might know that, sir, too. Uh, uh, is having our subs, but come in this view is that there must be reserves so that we, can, we are able to continue the programs of our union. Also, I'm not sure the treasurer should listen to this one. Comrade Lindy also want to see clean audits across the structures of SATU. I'm sure the treasurers are listening to this one. Comrade Lindy would like to see clean audits across the structures of Satu. Comrades, welcome Comrade Lindy on the stage. Amanda! Away to Amanda! Viva ANC SACP Kosatu Viva 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 ANC SACP Kosatu Sanko Viva Viva Manta Viva Satu Western Cape Viva 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 Sat in the Western Cape Viva Viva Sat in the Western Cape Viva Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Don Pasquale. Long live. Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Don Pasquale. Long live. Manta. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Comrade Chair. Let us take this opportunity to appreciate uh, the introduction as well, coming from uh, our Comrade uh, Sakom Convener. Uh, we want to, to greet you, comrades, and uh, before even greet you, uh, appreciate, uh, you know, the resilience that uh, one is able to see here. When you have a meeting of SATU or a lecture of SATU that was supposed to have started at 6 o'clock, uh, with at least the expectation that around 8 o'clock will be done with the lecture and then we'll be rushing back home. 
but uh, because of you know what we're living with here in the country we find ourselves having to start by the time which were expected at least uh, to be done which is around eight o'clock after seven eight o'clock and seeing uh, you know members of SATU here seated here in this meeting and also you know you you can see that there is that zeal and and comrade chairperson comrade mavus before greeting i have to say this uh, comrade i adore the choir amanda uh, big ups to yourselves comrades and uh, because you know one can be able to see that you know when comrades are singing they're not just singing for the fun of it comrade chair they are singing, you see that it's, from, it's coming from within. And we want to appreciate that in the union. So I'm just saying that and congratulating you and thanking you, you know, on behalf of the National Executive Committee of the Union. Comrade Chair, let me also take this opportunity and greet uh, the, the leadership of the union in the province, uh, led by the provincial chair, Comrade uh, Vusum Zizweni, um, together with another NEC member, Comrade uh, Provincial Secretary, Comrade Smongile, uh, in absentia, of course. Uh, let us greet uh, the Provincial Working Committee of SATU in the province, but further, the Provincial Executive Committee uh, of the Union in the province, uh, the REC members who are here, uh, the branch leadership amongst us uh, within our union. We are greeting you, comrades. But importantly as well, let us greet uh, from our mother body, Kosatu, our Provincial Deputy Chair, uh, Comrade Andile, and, and appreciate that at least um, COSATU in the Western Cape does show that, uh, you know, as an affiliate we are led, and we want to appreciate that. We want also, uh, Comrade uh, Chair, to also take this opportunity. You know, um, this is from, from within, it's deep down, it's from the heart. Uh, to greet to Comrade Veronique. Williams. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. Uh, the reason that I'm greeting her, you know, special, it is simply because uh, during the year 2005, when I was first elected as the provincial gender convener in Pumalanga, uh, we led with Comrade Veronica. And, you know, to see her here today, uh, I very much appreciate that. Thank you so much for coming, Comrade Veronica. Uh, comrades, let us also greet uh, the Pasquale family in absentia, of course. Recognize them uh, on the basis that we are indeed gathered here today uh, to remember. And then, therefore, it is important for us to also recognize and opening remarks. Amongst others, you know, he spoke about the, the strength of the union in terms of us in numbers. And you know, that hit home immediately when he was speaking about that. And um, it then therefore brings me to this line of greeting, which I like the most, Comrade Deputy Chair, that uh, comrades, we are here and we are greeting you on behalf of the National Executive Committee of the Union, which is the structure that sent us here. And um, the NEC is representing more than 270,000 members of the union. Wow. And Comrade Deputy Chair, I want to repeat, to stress the strength of the union in numbers more than 270,000 members. That is where we are. And we are there. We have not stopped. We know very well that our target, we are looking there at 300,000 members. And which, of course, we are sure that even by the end of 2023, we would have achieved that. 
assisted by yourselves, of course, and all structures of the organization. We are here today, we are having a memorial lecture, and we have been made aware that uh, the Provincial Working Committee has been here for the past week. They've been doing nothing else but recruitment and finding ways to ensure that they address issues um, of retention with the membership that we're currently having in the Western Cape. So the exercise that we are doing here in this province of us recruiting, it gives us the idea that come end of 2023, we may as well be more than the 300,000. Thank you so much, Western Cape, for everything that we are doing. <laughs> for the union, of course. Uh, comrades, we would like to thank you for, for, for just giving us an opportunity and inviting us to say, NEC, we're inviting you to the memorial lecture. Please come to us. Please come and give us the lecture. And we want to appreciate it. You know, comrades, sometimes we, we, we do not recognize how important an invitation is. An invitation is very important. Because my take is that a person does not just wake up, think of inviting, and then just say at, at random, let me invite so and so. But immediately when you get that invitation to us, it gives us that pleasure that indeed our province recognizes the National Executive Committee and we appreciate that uh, so much, comrades. Now, while we do that, I think it is also important for us, whilst we remember the life and times of Comrade Don, not also to forget about looking at ourselves in recognition of what he stood for at the time when he was with us here in this union. A true leader, Comrade Don, a true revolutionary, a straight talker, a hard worker, we are still going to address those issues about a comrade. But importantly, a unifier, comrade. You know, Unity within our organization is sacrosanct, comrades. It just cannot be replaced by anything. So it is therefore important for it to start with us as the leaders. Let us be united for the benefit of those members that are at our different sides. For them uh, to be able to see and look at us and be able uh, to, to be united uh, themselves. Comrades, the good exercise that we are doing in terms of membership recruitment cannot be explained uh, you know, in so many ways. But what we want to say is that Comrade Don led this union at the time when it was very difficult. At the time when Comrade Don was le uh, leading this union, we can say that our membership was standing at 235,000 members. That was the time when Comrade Don left us. But through his leadership, that some of us are able to look into and emulate, we are proudly saying that we have grown far more than what Comrade Don left us in terms of numbers. So then, therefore, this says that wherever he is, he is looking down on us, on his favorite union, that he led with distinction that, yes, I have led. Yes, I have left my legacy. Look how Satu has grown. And that is what Comrade Don is saying as we speak now. Comrade Don, during his time of leading comrades, he never did anything that was going to fragment the union. That he did not do. Comrade Don did not even have a reason to know you in order for him to respect you. Comrade Don, immediately when you enter that office, Matthew Koniwe House of Satu, and then you need assistance from the union. 
Comrade John will not ask you, uh, where, are you where are you coming from, from which province are you? No. Comrade John will assume that anyone who enters that office is somebody who is looking for whatever that they are looking for, but from the union, not from him as an individual. So that is the Comrade Don that we are remembering here today. Comrade Don never addressed any issue in terms of the tribal lines. Comrades, our union today, today has got some elements of tribalism, which of course have been there some times back there were, uh, you know, some strides to ensure that those issues are addressed within the union. That really, Comrade Don let a Satu, which is non-sexist, Comrade Don let a Satu, which is non-racial, Don let a Satu, which is not discriminative. That is the union that Comrade Don left here. And which is the union that you and I must strive to ensure that Don Pasquale passed on in a car accident in Napir near Predastorp. That was the 27th of January, 2008, comrades. But it seems like it was yesterday. And what was remarkable in retrospect was the universal outpouring of respect and sorrow that was coming from all corners of the country. And not only in this country was he known, but to Comrade Don was indeed a global figure because of his participation through this union beyond this country, South Africa. Although at the time, comrades, he was very young. When I say young, I'm talking about 41 years old. That was the time of his passing. And to me, he was very young. Very young simply because the union at that time had gained a leader that was taking this organization to another level. Ukomrei Don was focused. Ukomrei Don had visions. And at that time, during the leadership of Ukomrei Don Pasquale, we had not yet at that time had any vision of us as Satu such that here today, seated here, we are saying that we are having the 2030 vision, Comrade Ingrid. But Comrade Don had a vision of his own. Comrade Deputy Chair, I'm talking about the negotiator of the union. That is what Comrade Don was. Comrade Don was a person who knew exactly how to confront the negotiations at the level of the PSCBC. And something good and remarkable about him was that whenever there were collective agreements, you and I, Comrade Mkabis, at some point, we may have some clauses that we forget and sometimes we are reminded by other leaders. But that was not what Comrade Don was. Comrade Don remembered each and every clause of every collective agreement that was signed. To such an extent that Comrade Don will even remember above what the negotiators of the employer would. Sometimes they would forget, but he will take it upon himself to go and remind them to say as part and parcel of this collective agreement, there is this law, there is this agreement you have not implemented. We are demanding that you implement. That is the type of a leader that we are talking about when we're talking about Comrade Don. But talking about him, comrades, 
in terms of him being a negotiator. I think it is important also to note that in terms of collective bargaining, he was so devoted to it. As we are, we are well aware that that is vested uh, to the position of the Deputy General Secretary in terms of national, to the Deputy uh, Provincial Secretary in terms of provinces, and the Deputy Secretaries as we go down. So that remains there. Uh, it is indeed the leadership of Comrade Don and a few others that are like him that taught us that we have to ensure that we stand up for ourselves and we know what is it that we are for or we are about. That is what he taught us. And to say the least, you know what is happening currently, more especially since Comrade Don was attached to negotiations, wherein, you know, leaders are no longer looking at ensuring that there is recruitment, unlike us here in the Western Cape, we are indeed recruiting. But leaders, other leaders have turned now into being personal and bashing other leaders. When indeed we are here, we are leading all of us. You know, sometimes, uh, Comrade uh, Ekadum, when I speak to members of SATU, I think it is important for us to distinguish that standing here as a leader does not mean that I'm better than any of us here. It is merely an opportunity that one is granted at some point by the same members that are here and leaders that are here. And then it does not mean that you are the best. And talking about national treasurers in this, in this union, we are counting more than 270,000 national treasurers. But there can only be one. So then therefore, that does not mean that when you have been granted that opportunity by the members saying that, comrade, we want to be led by you. Let us give you an opportunity for you to lead us. And then you become, for a lack of a better way, too big for your boots. It's winter now. I think it's appropriate to talk about boots. <laughs> winter is approaching. But we need to ensure that we respect the members of the union, the ones that have elevated you here. And that is what Comrade Don was. I remember a personal experience, a uh, Comrade Mavusi. At some point, I was still leading in Pumalang. And then um, we had a gender uh, uh, committee meeting, now referred to as GenCom. And for whatever reason, you know, I found myself missing the flight to Mpumalanga. And at that time, I could hardly drive, comrades, uh, because, you know, uh, one thing else that we must also um, appreciate um, is that this union has got a way of empowering all of us equally, comrades. The union looks well after its members, including the members that are there on the ground. Don't mind the leaders, the members. Now, I had missed a flight, and then I enter uh, the Imetio Koniwe house. Um, by the way, Comrade Don uh, was uh, babysitting the gender um, committee. And then um, I approached the PA of the general secretary that uh, I have missed my flight. And then while she was thinking how to respond, Comrade Don was approaching without even asking. Said, Comrade, are you okay? We're booking your accommodation for you to sleep overnight. And we're going to ensure that you get a flight first thing tomorrow. Is that okay? Or do you want to leave around 11, 12, midday, is it fine? Or in the morning? Which time would you appreciate, Comrade? In the midst of that, that happened on the spot. So hence, that is why I've got, you know, a personal experience of the warmth of a leader, a true leader who does not need to know you, 
A true leader who does not need to ask you for your credentials, even before uh, giving you assistance. So that gave me a, a very distinguished, you know, respect for Ukomri Don. And that is when I realized that, you know, as a leader, with us, we knew that hey, when we are a national leader, hey, it's not easy for us to approach them. Hey, how am I going to? But I was merely talking to an administrator, but the leader stepped in, and the leader, you know, just interpreted the administrative processes that are supposed to happen to the satisfaction uh, of myself, and I appreciate that, comrades. Now, what we're seeing here today, we're seeing leaders instead of recruiting, but they are bashing other leaders. And Ukomre Don will not appreciate that. We have collective bargaining happening, and it remains our responsibility. Because truth be told, comrades, we are teachers and education workers. And indeed, when we are talking about ourselves, where we operate as SATU members, we are educated, Shem. I'm proud to say that. Comrades who are educated, big ups for yourself. Therefore, why I'm raising that is simply because our response then, therefore, will not be the same as a person or a school. We are not looking down on anyone. But we are saying in terms of us as professional, looking at issues and looking at things, including interpreting the economy of the country, we have that capacity as a union. And we are proud to be having that. When you're talking, you're speaking economics, we teach economics to the learners in the schools. So why then, therefore, can we be confused about the economy of the country? Why then, therefore, can we be confused when, indeed, we are given 7.5% and a post-level one teacher is going to get more than the 7.5%, is going to get 7.7%. And then, therefore, why, in this current economic conjuncture, which is not favorable to the same percentage that we got. Why then, therefore, will we say, no, we can't sign? We go there, we sign. Understanding economics, which is our subject that we are teaching in the schools. Which is why, in 2018, when we were advising that comrades, what we are being given now, it is good for us to take. And that is what Comrade Don would have, advi would have advised as well. Let us take what we are being given now. Because our fear is like we had a premonition. Our fear is that if we don't, we may lose what is being offered now. But the response that we got was that no, no, this or nothing. I love it the way the president of the union puts it. And we got nothing, comrades. That was collective agreement number one of 2018, which of course the outer years was not addressed, ne? the outer year, the third year. But uh, before that, of course, we did have a year wherein we did not get any increment. But here we are today, Comrades, having got our back, back, back pays, having got the increment that we are having. And believe you me, comrades, had we not, had we not accepted this 7.5, it's something that has been spoken about by even the e economists out there to say this percentage that is being given to the public service is going to cripple the economy of the country. But Tina at that time would agree to say, yes, we're going to sign for the benefit of our members. So then, therefore, you have got people who go out there, there and say we are sell out. Who's selling out in any way? 
Is it the person who says, no, I don't want to take this little percent. I want something more. And then instead of getting more, they get nothing. Or is it the person who negotiates, strategically gets something big, when they are not aware yet that it is big, then accede to sign. And then sign, and then members benefit. Who's the sellout? Is that is the person with the signature the sellout? The answer is no. The sellout is the person who keeps on telling members lies about other leaders. And that is not what Comrade Don was about. Comrade Don was a straightforward person. His legacy, I just want to, um, to also refer to our current status in the province of the Western Cape. Here, comrades in the province, indeed, we must be honest. We must be honest that, indeed, in terms of what a comrade Don stood for, he would not have mis misled us as a union. But I think, importantly for us talking about the province, it is also important that um, talking about history, you know, and the apartheid legacy where we come from. Since at the beginning we explained ourselves as the union that we are a non-racial, non-sexist kind of a union. And, but here in the Western Cape Comrades, we are led by the colonizers. It is a fact. Whether we have anything to do with that or not, but that is the current situation that is facing us here. And if indeed we are not careful about ourselves looking at us in the future, we may find more Western Capes within the country itself. Comrades, you are quite aware that it is not smooth. Everything, the beds that we are lying on are not rosy. They are not full of roses. Because the colonizers that are currently administering this province, if it were according to them, they would indeed be, you know, governing the entire country. But Tina, as a union, we are steadfast. We are saying, comrades, let us not uh, be misled. We have our Congress resolution, which is straightforward, which is speaking to us that, comrades, let us ensure that moving forward, we are for the African National Congress. Problems we may be experiencing, but up until now, as teachers, we have not seen any other party that can come and be able to listen to us. At least we are having problems, but we are dealing with those problems within the ANC. They are not problems that are beyond us that can make us to take a decision that we are going against the ANC. The ANC remains our movement, comrades. The colonizers have shown that they are against progress. In fact, they are against Satu. If it were, according to this government of the Western Cape, Satu would not be existing anymore. Because Satu is looking after that poor child of the working class. That is us as teachers. We ensure that we are teaching those learners. Sometimes learners who do not have anything to eat, they come to school hungry. But because we've got that conscience, as teachers, we're saying we can't teach hungry learners. We take it upon ourselves, comrades, out of the little that we get in terms of our salaries. We share it with those learners. We are aware of the experiences that you are having in the different schools. The food that you sometimes bring to school 
from your, your homes. Nipati kaftine inkulu. I've seen teachers in the Western Cape. They've got big, big lunch boxes. Big lunch boxes. And at times, you know, I was wondering, I was saying, but why do teachers in the Western Cape carry such big lunch boxes? Do they really eat this much? And then I was corrected. They said, no. They are sharing with their learners in the schools. That is why these lunch boxes are big. Out of that big lunch box, only a small portion is going to be consumed by the teacher, but the rest will be going towards the learners. And we want to appreciate that, comrades, because you know all these good things that you are doing in the schools as teachers, they don't go unnoticed, but sometimes we do not open this to speak about them. And I think it is key for us to also be outright and, and, and talk about them. Comrades, I just want to, to quote something, uh, you know, that was um, said about our, our comrade, um, comrade Don. Comrade Don, knowing very well that, uh, you know, he was a negotiator uh, who was uh, responsible for uh, the negotiations, I think it is important for us to also quote what has been said by him and remind ourselves what type of a person are we talking about when we're referring to our former Gen Deputy General Secretary, uh, uh, Comrade uh, uh, Don. Comrade, at the time of his passing, um, there were so many, you know, words of condolences, words of sorrow that was coming from, you know, all over uh, the country. But I think uh, importantly for us to remind ourselves who indeed are we talking about. We're talking about a comrade Don who was just, you know, a, an ordinary member of the union uh, in Elsie's Refir branch of, of, of Satu and uh, being a maths teacher, you know, at uh, uh, John Ramsey Secondary School in the same Elsie's Refir. Um, he was born out of a teaching family because both his parents, uh, you know, they were uh, uh, teachers. But then, importantly as well, how he rose to the position of the Deputy General Secretary. Did you know, comrades, that Comrade Don was reluctant to accept the nomination to be nominated and elected as the DGS? He was very reluctant. On the basis that at the time, Comrade Duan was saying, I do not want to assume any position at the expense of any member of SATU who is contesting a position or the same position, lest I divide the union. That is not what I'm about. That was in 2006 when he was elected. But Comrade Duan only was only able to accept the nomination simply because the position of the DGS was vacant, and that was the only time that you could accept. Because he was clear that he was not willing to find himself in contestation with any comrade that is contesting a position. But with this one in particular, he were, just went in there uncontested because it was just a vacant position that had no body, and then Comrade Don managed to get into that uh, position uncontested. I just want Comrades to, to also quote a few words that were said by the then public sector you know, representative of Kosatu, uh, who uh, was uh, working closely with Comrade Don at the time during um, the, the negotiation. Um, he was speaking about him and his attitude towards the employer, how he used to conduct himself. Um, we, we want to quote the Shop Stewart magazine, comrades, after uh, the passing of Comrade Don. And then there was an article that was written by Comrade Sfiso Kumalo. Uh, and then 
he wrote this about Comrade Don, open quotes. He was saying, if he was angry, he was angry. And if everything was well, he was one of the greatest human beings ever. If you really wanted to trigger his temper, you could say anything unbecoming about Satu or about education or teachers in general. Then you go to him. He was very passionate about his profession and his fellow educators. He goes on to say, during the last public service strike in, two, in, in 2007, as one of the few negotiators who also happened to be COSATU Central Executive Member, the COSATU Joint Mandating Committee appointed him as the leader of our negotiating team. Although those negotiations were very tough and demanding, both physically and psychologically, Pradon never disappointed us. The, the article proceeds, it goes on. He is saying, we, meaning Comrade Don and Comrade Sfiso, had to leave the negotiations table and go to consult the general secretaries uh, of the Kosato Public Sector Union, sometimes from the middle of the night uh, to the early hours of the morning. I would sometimes be exhausted, and, uh, but Comrade Don will be there. When I joined the negotiations later during the day, he would brief me about the proceedings of the day. He had an amazing appetite and stamina for work. I close quotes. So this is how Comrade Don was. And when we are talking about a public sector coordinator at the level of COSATU, is a person that Comrade Don recognized. He did not see himself as a deputy general secretary that would be above anyone. He knew that when they were in negotiations, when Comrade Fiso, for whatever reason, could not proceed with the negotiations, him being there had a duty to report and give him feedback. This is how it, this is how it went when we were not around. That is the spirit of Comrade Don. And it's very possible for us, comrades, to also adopt the same spirit. It will not hurt, but rather it will build us, first as humans, secondly as teachers, then therefore as, you know, the country uh, in, 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 in its totality. But comrade, one last thing that, you know, one would not like to leave this lecture without having mentioned the type of pers person Comrade Don was. Comrade Don Pasquale was indeed a family man. He was a family man, and that is what he has always been advocating to other or to his fellow leaders as well. To say, Comrade, when it is time for me to go home, I have to be home. We are quite aware, of course, that uh, he had... Uh, his wife and three daughters, whom indeed he adored very much. And then he will give his family time to his family and ensure that at the time that he had that free time to go home, he could indeed go home and then be with his family. The teachings of Comrade Don that he usually told uh, people around him was that it is also important for all of us to hold on to our families. Because our families are our pillars that support us with the work that we are doing. So had it not been for our families, we would be staggering in the kind of work that we are doing. So then therefore, it is very important that when it is time for us to give attention to our families, let us do that, comrades. Comrade Chair, importantly, let us also remember that uh, Comrade Don's influence was felt far beyond 
uh, the confines of the union, which is SATU. And then undoubtedly, we will indeed, uh, you know, uh, remember him that way. And then be sure that as the article continued, um, he was also uh, seen as a person who was saying, if I had to go home really, usually on weekends, that is the time wherein I have to ensure that I go home to the Western Cape. And he was not shy to also indicate that he was from the Western uh, Cape. And then he used to say that uh, he will just be with his family. And for one sole reason, to recharge. And recharge so that he can be able to come back and have strength for him to continue with the challenging work and responsibility that the union had given to him. Comrade Chair, this is what you want to say about our late deputy, former deputy general secretary, who at the time of him leading us as a union was not looking forward to say what will happen in the next National Congress, but to Comrade Dawn never even concentrated at the next conference or the next Congress that was to follow. But he was focused on his responsibilities, that this is what I have to focus on in order for me to ensure that the members that I lead within the union their conditions of service become better. It is important for me to focus on what is it that is going to be good for them and what is it that is going to benefit the very members of SATO. And that is our own, the late o Comrade Don Pasquale. Long live the untiring spirit of Comrade Don Pasquale. Long live. Long live the undying spirit of Comrade Don Pasquale. Long live. Let us emulate Comrade Don, comrades. Let us take this union forward. Amanda. Thank you so much, Comrade Chair. Viva! 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 
Thank you to Comrade Lindy. We appreciate every word you said. Thanks, Comrade. Comrades, it's getting late, and I'm calling on the Provincial Treasurer to do the vote of thanks for us. Satu Viva! Viva! Viva the coast, uh, South Coast Choir! Viva! Viva! Comrades, the doubt of thanks. First, we want to say thank you to the PEC for allowing us, as well as Don Pasquale family, for allowing us to honor the memory of our fallen hero. Then, we want to say thank you to the REC, Comrade Bly and some people in the REC of the South Coast. And we want to say thank you especially to the George Brands and the Secretary of George, Comrade Makazi, for assisting us with the preparations. We are really appreciated. As you know, with load shedding, everything is possible. And then the choir, yo. Give yourself a hand of, round of applause. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. And now we can see the woman is leading in this union. And our keyboard player, yo, you were brilliant. Thank you. And then I want to say to our team, the Satu media team, all the way from Joburg, thank you for coming to the Western Cape to live stream. They are always happy to be here with us. Comrade Antili, and Comrade Antili already left, but we want to say thank you for him, for the message of support. They are always supporting us in the Western Cape. And then, we want to say thank you to you as the comrades. We have waited long. We have sitting in the wet, cold, rainy weather, but you are here. And thank you for your endurance with us and waiting with us to honor the memory. And then a special person 
And I can tell you she is special to me because we hold the same portfolio. She's my national treasurer. She can stand up for us. You may stand, treasurer. You may stand up. <laughs> you may stand. And then I want to ask our DPS, Comrade Kenneth Williams, just to show a token of appreciation. Thank you, Comrade Lindewe, flying in this afternoon for your words of encouragement. And if you have listened to what she has said, that the vision of Comrade Don Pasquale. And I want to tell you that you reminded us the vision he had for this union. So comrades, let's live that vision of Comrade Don Pasquale. I want to end off with the following. We have listened to all the speakers and what was said. And I want to say the following to you. I learned in life that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will for never forget how you made them feel. So for us, let's keep the memory of our Don Pasquale in our lives. Let's keep the legacy left behind, the vision what he left behind. So thank you, comrades. Thank you to our team and to our deputy chair as well for our MC. I can never forget him. So thank you. And we want to say you must drive safe. Please be safe on the roads. It's wet outside. And thank you. <laughs> and I want to end with the following that to say long live the undying spirit of Don Pasquale. Long live his undying spirit. Thank you, comrades. Mandla! Mandla! Comrades, your husbands are waiting on you. <laughs> listen here, listen here. When, when the treasurer say thanks to everybody, she mentioned the piano person. Well, Pula Pumlani wasn't there, now he's there. Let's give a big round of applause for Pumlani. <laughs> uh, comrades, to close, we need Comrade Deputy Provincial Secretary to come and do the closing remarks for us. Viva Satu Viva! Mandla!
Thank you, uh, comrades. Yes, indeed, uh, we are resilient, uh, Comrade Teresa. Even throughout the load setting, shows the spirit of Satu, but also the spirit of Don Pasquale. Comrades, it's quite clear in all the speeches here tonight that we are not going to give up on our people, especially the working class. We're not going to leave anyone behind. And Comrade Teresa, we are in this area since Monday, working tirelessly to recruit and to retain our people, our members that were taken from us, from the enemy. And I want to thank the PWC members, led by the chairperson, the Boland and Karu secretary, the national negotiator, the national or the provincial or the organizing secretary. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting it right, okay. And for the past week, we were doing recruitment, retention, labor law training, and we continue with the labor law training tomorrow. Novice Day on Saturday and the DP Memorial tonight, and we are not going to stop. We're going to take this program to every region in this province, Comrade Ndiwi. We will do it. That's our commitment as a PWC and as a PEC. We will roll out this program. We will take this program to every corner in this province to get into the classrooms, into the staff rooms, into the schools of our members. Because Satu is here. Satu is alive. Comrade Lendiwe, we are from the Don Pasquale Brigade. Was learning the stuff that we know from Don Pasquale. Don was guiding us giving us the necessary. And the one thing I need to share with you, when I was a regional education convener, he never allowed the report with mistakes in it. He will ask the provincial education convener, go back. And he used the word comb. Ne? Come, go and comb the report. And then bring it back again. That is the Don Pasquale that and the brigade that we are coming from so our commitment is that we will take up the baton and run as a don pasquale brigade all of us because all of us was stats by don pasquale and the one thing that i admire of him the most comrade and you mentioned it he was just a master in remembering names you! He will get to Pickettburg and then he will get the whole brands and side structures names. Correct. I think some of us are struggling with the deputy chair. So comrades, our program for tomorrow, labor law will start at 9 o'clock uh, at Levi Camp, Comrade Regional Secretary. And, and you need to be the record at South Coast of Kuru. The Karu REC carried the right to bring in close to 70, Comrade Lendiwe, close to 70 site stewards and leaders in Karu, in a small region like Karu. So we want to see more than 70, Comrade Sampiwe and Comrade Bly, Comrade Makasi, more than 70 of our members in the labor training tomorrow. The same for Saturday's Novice Day. The message that we want to spread to the smaller regions is that Satu is alive. 
we are on your doorstep, we in your house, we in your staff room, in your class. Satu is here and Satu is alive. Viva Don Pasquale, viva! Viva, viva Don Pasquale, viva. viva! So just from our side, save the drive. The road is wet, there's a lot of rain outside. We want to see you at the labor law training and the novice day on Saturday. Mantra! 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 Thank you, Com. Viva Satu Viva! Uh, comrades, Comrade Willem just uh, told me that uh, all the pictures he has taken will be on the national website. So you can go there to the Satu National website and you will find Facebook page, sorry. There will be an album under Don Pasquale and then you will see. You can show your husband. This is where I was. There? Show him the pictures. Um, comrades, I want to end off with this. I've been waiting the whole evening just to share this with you. This was written down 15 years ago about Don Pasquale. And the person that wrote this, he said, in his honor, that is Don's honor, we will continue to fight side by side with Satu and the rest of the components of the education alliances to overcome the challenges besieging our education system. And we're still doing it today. We still have challenges today. 15 years after he passed, we wouldn't think that it would be possible to still have the same challenges, but they are there. Viva Satu Viva! Mandla! Amandla! Take it away, comrade. Come on, Pomlani, do it!